Welcome back to another installment of Unhinged Madman rants about a game he barely understands. Today's subject is Dark and Darker. Keep in mind this video is more of a brief look into the game and not at all a comprehensive video because... well... I am going to briefly summarize gameplay. You select one of nine available classes and load into a dungeon. Within the dungeon, you search chests and loot spawns before making your way to an extract in the form of a rope, an elevator, or an exit portal. This loot ranges from treasure, gear you use to build out your character, and potions that enhance your survivability. There are currently three maps in Dark and Darker, the Goblin Caves, the Howling Crypts, and Dog Frost Caverns. The thing you will fight the most in Dark and Darker is the AI. The Goblin Caves are filled with goblins, who'd have thought. Goblins tend to be the easiest to manage because they have the reach of a toddler and the skull density of one as well. Howling Crypts are filled mostly with slow-moving skeletons that can be very easily dodged, and on both of these maps, the AI never really stands as a threat, just kind of a deterrent to prevent people from sprinting through the entire dungeon in two seconds. Uh, short of mini-bosses, they never really pose much of a challenge or danger. And then there's the Frost Caverns. Every AI on this map is annoying as hell. There are far too many of them. They have different attack patterns, which makes them harder to dodge. Most of them give you a slow effect if they hit you, which just makes your life even harder. And again, there are far too many of them. Like, what the hell is this? I thought I was playing Dark and Darker, not COD Zombies. Why am I training this many enemies? Worst of all, it makes PvP borderline impossible. If somebody wants to, they can simply run away, aggroing every AI within a 30 meter range radius before dumping them on top of you. You wanted a half decent fight with another player? <laughs> Congratulations! You now get to deal with four wolves, two yetis, a giant dude with a shield, six kobolds, and an ungodly amount of skeletons. Whenever I see the frost caverns pop up, I am so excited to wait three minutes for the map to rotate out so I can play the game without straining my will to live. <sighs> With that tirade complete, the only other real noteworthy AI are the bosses, but considering that they ragdolled me every single time I so much as looked at them, I just didn't fight them that much. Now let's discuss the source of addiction to this game, the PvP. Finding AI can be fun, but if it's any bigger than your standard skeleton, the only real way to fight it is to cheese it, which, while sometimes funny, loses its charm very, very quickly. No, the PvP is where it's at. When you queue, you are matched with other players of a similar gear score. The tiers are Sub-25, 25 to 125, and Suffering. Sub-25 is where you find the most variance in player skills. Sometimes they are extremely competent, and sometimes you are stupefied by what you are observing. 25 to 125, in my opinion, provides the most interesting PvP, often resembling 15 homeless dudes fighting over a Baconator in a Walmart parking lot. Over 125 gear score is a shit fest filled with Giga Sweats who have done so much research on min-maxing their builds that they could write a term paper on it. It wouldn't be so bad if the two times I attempted this, I didn't get locked in a chokehold by warlock trios who played like incredibly passively. As previously mentioned, there are currently nine classes in Dark and Darker, and whilst I can't give you an in-depth explanation of each of them, because, again, I can give you my short observations. The Fighter is the least interesting class to talk about because they are just quite good. They are exceptionally versatile, and in basically any situation, they have a solid fighting chance. High damage up close, solid damage at range, the ability to make themselves quicker, and the ability to quickly heal themselves, what else do you need? There are very few situations that you end up in as a fighter that you cannot win because of your class. Do you have a brain? No? Then play Barbarian. Every other class has a certain level of strategy, planning, or thinking that they need in order to have a fighting chance. For most Barbarian players, the pinnacle of strategy is swing axe at other player and try not to get hit by their weapon. 
especially in trios, you're often gonna see barbarian players doing really dumb things because odds are they're gonna get away with it. What, there's no fall damage in this game? Well, how do you do? Even if they die in a suicide blitz, they can just get resurrected by their other teammates, so they're going to do it every damn time. The two things that really piss off Barbarian players is either maintaining your distance or running away. For example, after a solid team fight, myself and this enemy ranger were the only ones left standing, and he keeps freaking running away. Get back here, you little bastard. He just kept running and running and running until eventually I was able to juke him into getting close enough that I could murder him, and that felt really freaking good. Ironically, Barbarian probably has one of the higher skill ceilings in the game, with a very heavy risk-reward playstyle, but does this affect a majority of people who play the class? Not in the slightest. Rogue is a menacing force that appears out of the shadows and shanks you to death before you had any clue you were in danger. Sometimes. In solo games, maybe. At least, like, once or twice. Most of the time, though, rogues are just not very good at their class. In duos or trios, they tend to just be the last person you kill. Okay, sometimes they can get you, and that is really scary when they just pop out of nowhere, you're completely unsupported, and you die because they caught you wholly off guard. But most of the time, they just kind of sit back and bait out their teammates waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike, and in the meantime, all their friends are dead, and now they have to 1v3, and it's like... <laughs> Good job, guy. Now you gotta deal with the rest of us. <laughs> what? I'm going to preface this by explaining that my favorite way to play Dark and Darker is to get stuck into melee close quarters combat where dodging and blocking tend to be the difference between life or death. And that preference may affect how I feel about this class, but I'm just gonna say it. I hate Ranger. I do not enjoy this class. The seemingly ideal way to play Ranger is if someone gets even remotely close to you, run away, create space, hit them with a volley of arrows, and then if they get close to you, run away again, rinse, repeat, over and over. This playstyle is just incredibly boring to me, and going up against it also really, really sucks. This guy was such a goblin that he had four hunting traps, didn't have any pots on his body so he didn't glow at all, and sat in a dark corner for ten minutes. He even picked up the bloody torch I threw at him so that he could hide in the shadows. It, 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 punching him to death with my bare fists was a fantastic feeling, which unfortunately you can't see because he picked up the torch. Thanks for ruining the clip, asshole. I am aware of things like the shotgun build, which can make your bow incredibly effective up close. But in all honesty, if I want to play with a bow, I'm just gonna go be a fighter. Sure, the spear can be an excellent melee, but one, the fighter can also use the spear, and two, I find the longsword to be leagues more entertaining to use. Obviously, balancing a ranged class in a game where everyone moves super slowly and each attack is so important is going to be difficult. I just don't think they've hit the balance yet, and I do not like the class as a result. Then there's the wizard. The wizard is a surprisingly fun class. Considering my preference for melee combat, I expected not to like this guy. And then I realized that shooting fireballs is a lot funnier than shooting arrows. Wizard boils down to... I am a walking weapon of mass destruction! I shall vanquish thee with- Oh, you're way too close. Leave me alone. Leave me alone! Wizard is a powerhouse at medium range. If you are not actively prepared to dodge his spell, you're just going to die. Even pushing a wizard is dangerous because, yeah, he may be a feeble old man, but if he blows you up twice, it ain't gonna take much more with that little dagger in his hand. This leads me to wizard's greatest enemy, and no, it surprisingly isn't the rogue. It's collateral damage. More than ever, you will notice your teammates getting in the way, like, come on, freaking move, I had the easiest multi-kill in the universe right there. If you aren't careful with your spells, you are going to be a greater blue-on-blue -blue risk than the A-10 Warthog. Chain Lightning is one of the most powerful spells in your arsenal, with the ability to arc between three enemy players for massive amounts of damage. Unfortunately, it almost always seems to jump to a teammate. In this clip, it arced through the frickin' ground to hit my bard. Why? Wizard is fun. Just be careful, otherwise your ears are going to get blown out over Discord. There are two types of cleric players. Those who support their teammates, and those who frontline. Those who support their teammates are often playing mama to a bunch of rowdy children. The most stressful thing in the world to them is when they miss their buffs. 
All right, here you go, and here you go. Oh, no, wait, hang on, I missed. Come back here. No, hang on, don't go in yet. You're not protected. I haven't buffed you. No, please, come back. No, no. oh, okay, here you go. <laughs> their entire strategy hinges on buffing their teammates and sending them on a rampage, but they're still fairly competent fighters themselves. The frontline cleric can basically be summed up as, <clears throat> I will use the power that God has bestowed upon me to kick your ass. Smite clerics might not quite match the damage output of a fighter or a barbarian, but they still hurt really bad. The bard is surprisingly versatile, and I feel like it's the class with the greatest difference between a good player and a bad player. A bad bard is the easiest kill in the game. You can pretty much just walk right up to him and smack him, and that, that's it. That's the extent of the fight. But a good bard who is able to keep their allies buffed, their enemies debuffed, and get a few stabs of their own in is absolutely terrifying. They are quick, agile, can do a good amount of damage, and provide bonuses for their teammates. If you have to fight a bard, try not to let them play their music, because if you do, that fight is just going to become dramatically more difficult. Warlock is an interesting class. Unlike the wizard, you do not have spell slots. Rather, each spell you cast costs a little bit of health from your health pool. This would normally be a very big downside, except for the fact that the Warlock is able to heal off of every tick of damage they do with their spells. The Warlock is a pretty versatile class that can support its frontline by offering chip damage. Or at least it would be if every single Warlock wasn't so busy spamming the Hydra. The Hydra is basically a turret that launches a bunch of projectiles even against invisible enemies. It would be a fine spell if it wasn't spammed every three seconds, used to block doorways, and Warlocks are able to heal off of it. If they cast their own spell on their own Hydra, they generate their own health. If you are going up against a trio of Warlocks who are all spamming the Hydra and you are not in a very coordinated team yourself, you might as well just disconnect. It's, it's just a very frustrating fight. I'm not saying I hate Warlock as a class. The kit itself is very interesting, and with their general access to melee and armor, you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. But if you spam Hydras, I hate you. I understand that Druid has been through the nerf machine like seven times at this point, but if I'm being completely honest, I have no sympathy for druid players. Those rat bastards were the most annoying people to fight in the game. And I'm talking literally here. If you dealt any damage to a druid player whatsoever, they would instantly transform into a rat and scurry away. Killing a druid in this form is probably the best feeling in the game, especially if you do it with a mace or your fists. Oh. That is satisfying. Piss off, Stuart Little, back to the lobby. Other than a few extra spells, they can of course transform into other animals, such as a chicken, a panther, and a bear that I can only describe as a sexual predator. Why does it look like that? I no longer feel comfortable. I'm leaving. And that'll about do it. Um, yeah, there is so much info I missed out on solely because of the fact of this video is 40 minutes long and there is way too much to cover to squeeze it all into one video, but I only do a few videos of variety content every so often, so had to figure it out. If you're interested in Dark and Darker, it is currently free on the Steam store. I should preface that you're mostly playing a demo. Uh, when you do the free mode, you can only unlock one class and you uh, can't use any of the superior gear. But if you want to try the game out, see if you like it, then that's definitely something that I would recommend. I have had a good time with it. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Next week should still hopefully be the Baldur's Gate video, um, unless something changes between the Thursday night that I'm recording this and next week. But um, other than that, again, thank you so much for watching, especially all the way to the end. Let me know if you'd like to see more Dark and Darker, and I hope you enjoyed.